let's dive into this. Because Pitts also taught us what? He says, you've got to study history. You've got to look back. And if you want to solve the mystery of, of wealth, you've got to know the history of it. When we start at zero and we go to 1750, that age was called the agricultural age. That was the farming age. Everybody say the farming age. age. Now, in the farming age, get this, more land equals more wealth. So wealth moves in pockets throughout the ages. You'll find this. It moves. It, It shifts. It doesn't stay steady. It shifts. And people who shift with it get wealthy. People who stay the same and stay in the rut, they get poor. So you got to know the movement of wealth and the shifts of wealth or you'll end up dying broke. So the farmer age was 1,750 years we existed in this age. Now, it's, it's interesting, right? Because if you think about that, the people who were wealthy were the people who owned land. They were called lords because kings would go in and take over lands. And the elite or the lords would, would own the land and it was the farming age, so land equaled money. But the lords were the elite. They didn't want to farm it, so they hired the peasants, leased it out, made money. And then that's where we get the term land. Now, here's the thing about the farming age. We've got to understand because we still have the thinking in the farming age, thinking in the digital age. In the farming age, everything was slow. The turtle ran, won the race. <laughs> the problem is that story was, it's not that the, out of persistence, what you got to learn, the, 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 the other side of the story is, the rabbit should have never took off the accelerator. Amen. Slow. Why was it slow? Think. You planted a seed. Oh, God, oh, please, please, God bless me. Ain't nothing happening. I got to wait six months, seven, eight, nine months. I got to sow and I got to wait. And hope and pray it it rains. And the bugs don't eat it. I get one shot. That's it. So building wealth was... Now, when we read the Bible, I want you to think, are you you ready? I told you, you got to watch out. I might offend your mind. I'm probably going to offend it right here. What age was the Bible written? But God loves... That's why when Mr. Speed came on the scene, he gets frustrated with slow-thinking people. Huh? And he says what? Stop saying it's four months until the harvest. (laughs) Touch your neighbor, say, stop saying it's going to take forever. Come on, touch your neighbor, stop it. Come on, slap them. Slap slap yourself. Come on, just slap yourself. Say, stop saying that. Stop saying 50 years. I want to get you there in three. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, now look, thus in farming age, you grew up, either you were rich 
or you're poor. There was no middle class. So in the farming age, you grew up poor and you died you never saw change. You grew up seeing a horse and buggy. You died seeing what? Because change was. Out of the farming age, is this good or good? Out of the farming age, that's where the teaching came of this. Get rich quick. Let me hear you say it. Schemes. Why? To a farming age, a message of get rich quick. How, oh, how ridiculous. I got to plant my seed. I got to. It's a ridiculous. And guess what? Y'all still think that way today. We still hear the messaging. Beware of! If it's quick, it's got to be a scheme. <laughs> Yet I'm going to show you a list of people in my life, people who are making millions before they're 30. And it ain't no scheme. And they're giving big checks to the church. Come on, somebody help me right here. We just got to drop the scheme. Yeah, there are some schemes. We don't want to deny that. You always got a hustler somewhere. But there are more ways to make money and to become a multimillionaire fast than ever in the history of the world. And if you're not looking for something quick, you're never going to find something quick, and you're never going to devise a business or a company to create fast wealth. Come on, somebody say yes. yes. Everybody say goodbye to slow. Just turn around and say, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> now, now, as we progress, what, what, what do we hear people saying now in these days? You got people attacking fast. Because like we used to say, this is a microwave society. We want it now and we want it what? Fast. What part, of micro, what part of microwave society don't you get? We are in a microwave society. And you've got to learn to live in the age that you're operating in. Because if you don't learn to operate and think fast, you're going to get left behind. Age number two, look at this age. Interesting. 1750 to 1950, called the Industrial Age. We all know that. Now, where did wealth shift to? Wealth shifted to manufacturing. So, in this age, right, machines equaled wealth. If you had a big machine, you controlled the wealth. So, this is where all the big factories, this is where, uh, you know, Car production with Henry Ford, the Rockefellers, uh, all, all of these big industrial, Andrew Carnegie, all these big industrial guys, they owned the factories and they got wealthy. Now, notice the time frame that in every age, the age gets shorter, but the age also produces more wealth for a group of people. So if you had the machines, you had the wealth. This produced a permission-based society in which you had to go to the man with the machine to get permission to produce a product. So if you controlled the printing press, you had to go to a publisher and ask a publisher, do you like my book? 
oh golly, oh golly, I spent five years writing this, five long years writing this book. Will you please, Purdy, please, will you publish my book? Yeah, and we're going to control 90% of the profits. Yeah. Okay. This society was a conformist society. You went to a job. You got your little, you got your little black lunch bucket. And everybody stood in line and waited to punch the clock. They all had the same clothes on, all had the same lunch bucket, and it was a conformity culture. They had to be told by somebody else what to do to get permission. Am I right on it, everybody? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the cool thing. If you're a singer, you couldn't just produce a record. Remember the stories of Elvis? You know? He had to go. He had to get at the company. He had to get a record label because it was the machines. See how money moved? Wealth moved? Farming machines. And now what did the industrial age? The industrial age created new messages. The new message in the industrial age was, hmm, we need more workers. We've got to get farmers to come out of farming. And we've got to get them into manufacturing. And so guess what they offered? 401k plans, benefit plans. Come work for us and trade your time for money. The introduction of the job. J-O-B, just over broke. <laughs> A new form of slavery. Where you don't control your wealth, the manufacturer is controlling your wealth. Oh, come on, are you with me? Now they had a problem. We got farmers coming to work for us. We need leaders, we need managers. And they're ignorant. Because in the manufacturing age, that was the birth of high school. They're like, wait a minute, we need to teach them. <laughs> we need to teach people. They need to know how to read. We got manuals to run these million dollar equipments, and the folk can't read. We need reading. We need them to add one plus one equals two. We need to teach them the basics, reading, writing, arithmetic. Get these farmers educated. They didn't need no education out on the farm. You have muscles, boy, work the ground. <laughs> you don't need no education. Plant a seed and wait. Industrial age. Then they said, oh, let's create a message. Get a job. Wait a minute, excuse me. Go to school. Get a job. That's secure. Set a goal, watch. Set a goal to live a middle class life. Two car, one car, picket fence. Two bedroom, two bath house. Manicured little yard. And three kids. And keep working the job will give you just enough to maintain your middle class life. Industrial age. Guess what we still got? Same messaging. Some people say, Keith, you're get rich quit. You're get rich fast. Message is a scam. I'm like, no, the real scam is get rich slow. That's the real scam. But some of y'all don't know it yet. There's a big pot at the end of the rainbow. People are going to be standing at the end of college waiting to hire you to pay you six figures. Oh. Woo. And you get to the end of the pot and there's nobody standing there waiting to hire you. It's all a big lie to keep you in the system. That's where that came from. 
we're still living in the same messaging today. Now, do I think nobody should go to college? I, I, I think if you're a professional, I think if you want to be a lawyer, you got to go to college. If you want to be a doctor, be poor like doctors are. You know that, right? Doctors don't make what they used to. It's a whole different world now. You want to be an accountant, you probably need to go. You don't have to. You can add. You can subtract. Uh, but you see, there's certain things I agree. You, you may need to go if you want to be a professional in a unique field. But, but the day of jobs is over, and today it's all entrepreneurial. It's about, it's about a new season. Come on now. It's about controlling your own destiny. Come on. It's about putting power back in your hands. Taking control of your life so if God tells you to do something, you're not, I got to ask my boss if I can get off on Monday to come to, come to the seminar. 1950 and 1978, the distribution age. Now outlets equal wealth. So now all these people are making, building all this stuff. And now they're like, how do we get it to the masses? So what? Every, everything went to, man, the malls came. The distribution centers came. So if you owned a distribution center, you became the top wealthiest people in the world. And, and Sam Walton, Sam Walton's wealth makes Bill Gates' wealth look pathetic. When he died, they split up his wealth five ways, and all five of them became the top richest people in the world. Come on, man. The daughter was the wealthiest one, was, yeah, at that point in time. So that was the distribution age. And now what? That was brick and mortar. Now we flip it. It's not brick and mortar. It's click and order. <laughs> Speed. Everybody say speed. speed. Now I can buy something at the speed. Look where God's taking us. I think we're getting back to where God likes it more comfortably. He likes speed. Now faith. Not. I know it might make some of you uncomfortable, but I, I like speed. You can, you can like slow. Go ahead. Next one is the technology age. This age, the wealth went to tech know-how. Tech know-how created wealth. So the computer is now the vehicle to being able to, to, to move us forward and to speed things up and make things even faster. Now notice the decades. The decades keep going like this. The ages keep shrinking. Now we're even shorter. We're 78 to 94 that the computer comes on the scene. And now, and now, what, do we, now what do we got? We got Bill Gates. We got Steve Jobs. We got Dell. All these people because they were in the right pocket. They get wealthy really fast. Because tech know-how became king. Sam Walton was actually on the forefront because he hired IBM programmers to come over and create systems through technology that once you bought a book, they wrote technology that would go to the distribution center and say, we sold three books today, ship out three more, so we got them back on the shelves. And it was there where Walton's wealth just exploded. So again, in each age, wealth explodes. The opportunity for wealth explodes. It's in this age right here. This is where all the, all the guys in, in the tech world, more millionaires were created than ever in the history of the world, were created during this short amount of time. This is where 20-year-olds became DECA millionaires. 1994 to 2003, information age. Shorter period of time, 
But the first time in history, he who controls the flow of info equals wealth. So what do we see? AOL, Google, Yahoo, now controlling the flow of wealth, and they become the most wealthiest people. Now, you cannot control information, but you can control the, the flow of the information. And people who could control that <laughs> uh, becomes really, really wealthy. 2003, 2008, now we went into the techo info edutainment is what I call edutainment. So the people, look at these guys, you know, you know, Jeff Foxworthy, Russell Simmons, Tyler Perry. They, they, begin to, they begin to use, they use comedy. You got Steve Harvey. They use comedy to spread information, to, to entertain people, and people were buying more and more into entertainment. So then the shift be, became, you know, the techo info edutainment period that we're in. So you got information, now you got the, the entertainment that now we're delivering programs to teach people online how to get wealthy, how to's. Now the, the knowledge you have becomes valuable. And if you can take that knowledge and add a little entertainment to it, you can get super duper wealthy faster than any other generation. Now that it's, it's widening, the opportunity for the common man now, it's widening because th there is no permission. You don't have to get permission. Now you can go to Amazon, print your own book, post your own book, come on. Now you can use Spotify. You got your own song. You can write your own song, produce your own song, put it up on Spotify, and make money in your underwear like Michael Pitts. <laughs> now you can become the crazy prophet. <laughs> uh, like I do. I, every day I wake up, I have, my, I have my computer. I have it set that when I make a sale, it goes ching, ching. So I sleep all night, I wake up in the morning, I go out to the bat cave, I hit my thing, and my computer goes, chang, 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 <laughs> chang, chang, chang. Because <laughs> all these sales start rolling in, how can you be miserable when you have chang, chang, chang going on? <laughs> Touch your neighbor, say you need to get some chang, chang, chang. Chang, chang, chang. Come on, tell them, tell them. You need to get some chang, chang, chang going on. All right. Today, where, what did I just introduce you? I introduced you now into 2008 till today, which is something that existed that never happened before was partnership. What, what, what did, what did, Kindle and Amazon do. They said, listen, we're going to partner with this little guy named Keith Johnson that the world doesn't know. We're going to bypass Penguin Books, in which I had to deal with him. They paid me, but now he's not going to have to go beg New York publishers to publish whatever he wants to say. Now we're going to give little bitty Keith Johnson, nobody really, I mean, people know him, but people don't know him on a mass scale, but I'm going to partner with a little, the housewife. I'm going to partner with the plumber. I'm going to partner with the little preacher in Malaysia or the little preacher over here, wherever, and I'm going to partner with them, and we're going to partner with the little guy. And now strategic partnerships is what develops wealth. And Apple, never before, they opened up the iPhone. See all these apps? What we're going to do is we're going to let you write your own app. And you could be in the middle of Poduck, Kentucky, in the bottom of Mama's basement. And you can create an app and partner with us. And you can come, become wealthy without getting permission from nobody. It's partnership. That's why we're in, that's why we're, our relationships. Building on our relationships now is what is the key 
to maximizing our wealth in this generation. Come on, put your hands together if you believe that. Come on, you with me? So I wanted to show you that so you understood where we're at. The speed of everything. Everybody say speed. speed. And so we've got to get used to being the number one skill you need today is not patience. Patience was the skill of the farmer. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you got to persevere. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying there's a point of it's going to take time to build a church this big, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that. But if you're going around praying for patience, you're going to be left behind. You've got to say, God, make me agile. God, help me to be able to change fast. Because the world is changing. Well, I used to say five year, at five-year intervals. Then I said three years. Now you know what it is? It's changing every 60 days. And you've got to be able to pivot. You can't be like, well, Bishop, I just don't like change. I don't like these change. You've got to fall in love with change as a human being right now. Because change is going to get faster and faster and faster. And those who adapt, those who move, those who flow, that's why everybody's saying what? Listen to the Spirit of God. You, you, you got, it's almost like you can't have a plan. you got to depend on God more now than ever because you got to go where the wind flows. And the money is moving and the targets are moving. And you got to be led by the Spirit. It's all a setup for God's people because we have insight that the the world doesn't have. Come on, somebody! We got a secret weapon. The world paying us to solve their problems because we got insight. We got some solutions going on. Now watch. Here's the final age. What next? Artificial intelligence. Now the robots are going to do it for us. You can fight it. <laughs> There's a statement. Culture trumps anointing. You can fight it or flow with it. Maybe it's back to God never wanted us to live by the sweat of our brow. Just a thought. You can argue it. It's okay. I don't know. <laughs> but this, but this, but this... Robots equal wealth. That's where we're going. He who has the robot. That's where, why techno companies, you, you want to be one or two things, techno or you want to be an infopreneur. Those are the two fastest industries creating more millionaires than ever before in the history of the world. Did you get that? So, that's what's next. Now, next slide. Let me show you this. Value mountain. Look at this. What you need to be asking yourself when you think about speed is how can I bring more value? Some of you are listening to these social media hot dogs tell you, you got to get in the grind. Have you heard that? Man, you got to work hard, man. You got to work harder and harder. You got to kill yourself, lose your family. It doesn't matter to get this Ferrari that I rented. And this mansion I got from Airbnb. It's all facade. Work hard is for lower income people who use their muscles. The world doesn't pay very much for your muscles anymore. Why? Because that's the wrong age. Farming age, industrial age, they paid you for your muscle. Use your muscle today, you're going to make about $20,000 to $80,000 a year in construction. Construction workers, you're going to be maxed out at about $80,000. So if you're not using your muscles, you're going the next level of value is, okay, let me manage the people who have muscles. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in management, even at McDonald's, you're going to make $40,000, $50,000 a year. Top level management who are managing muscle people are going to make about two fifty. dollars But we need to go higher. 
Where do we want to be? Look at this. People who are using their mouth. That's why you better stop. Being afraid to talk to people because you're looking at your cell phone the whole time. Because we are in the partnership industry and if I'm going to make more money, somebody's got my money in their pocket. Are you it? I don't know. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, you might be her. I don't know. I better meet you. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Hey, maybe it's you. Maybe, oh, maybe it's you. I don't know. Hey, my name's Keith. How you doing? This is how you do it. I got to teach you. Hey, my name's Keith. How you doing, man? Yeah, man. Yeah, nice smile, man. You look nice. You like the hair? That's a nice guy. Got to get your face out of the cell phone. And you've got to find some elephant-sized relationships. When God wants to bless you, he's going to bring a person, but he can't bring a person if your face is buried in the cell phone. I mean, I'm down here at the, I'm down here at, at the hotel, going down the elevator. People come in. It's me. I have the ability to change their life. I have the information to change their life. And the idiots are looking at their cell phones. You dumb. Double D dumb. You'd never know how I could have helped you. Use your mouth, you can make $100 million today. But now, let's go higher. Now we're getting into spirit. Everybody say spirit. Because now it's about imagine action. It's about imagination. Who's the highest earner in the world today? Elon Musk. Is he working with his muscles? Is he in the grind? Is he managing? He's into his imagination using his imagination to solve problems that are in the world, and he's saying, I'm going to use that and tap into that. This is spirit. Your imagination's not in your mind, it's in your spirit. Your mind is just for survival. Your spirit is for thriving. You, a, a, a duck has a mind, a bird has a mind, but that's just to survive. God puts spirit in you. Like Joe, Bishop Darlington, <laughs> Darlington said, and in spirit is where imagination and creativity dwells. Amen. And now you can tap into the Holy Spirit and use the spirit of God to imagine solutions for the world that the world has never heard of and the world will pay you millions and millions of dollars. Come on, somebody clap on that. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> now, look, next one. So the higher level, we've got to climb the value mountain. How can I add more value? The world doesn't pay you for your muscles. It pays you for the value you bring it. Bring low value, it's going to pay you low. The easiest and fastest way and most profitable asset you can build today is an information product. The easiest. Everybody say easiest. Easy. The fastest. Yes. Most, profitable. most profitable. Asset I can build, I can build. is an information product. Information product. See, if, you're build, if you want to build a business, you're sitting down, I want to build a business. The first question you've got to ask yourself, whatever the business is, what has the highest margins? Not just what makes a profit. Like, I want to start a restaurant. Oh, great, you're going to be at 20% profit. Can we think a little beyond that? Information has a 78% profit margin. Where do you want to be? The less time, redeeming the time, I need to buy back my time. 
the less amount of time, the easiest amount of thing that I can get fast to the market to make money in my underwear, I can create it once and make it for a lifetime. 